The prairies, a nearly 2 million square kilometer area in western Canada, is known for its plains, forests, lakes, and farmland. It is the country's breadbasket, and indeed the ubiquitous barley, wheat, and canola fields buttress the region's homesteading roots and rural identity. Near the heart of the heartland lies St. Peter's Abbey. It is the oldest Benedictine monastery in Canada, where monks have been keeping their covenant with God every day for over a century. The monks come here seeking serenity, community, and a religious way of life, which has barely changed in over a thousand years. Father Peter Novikoski is the abbot at St. Peter's and has been here for most of his life. I think I can say that after having lived here 55 years or so, I've, uh, I've had a, a satisfying life, had a, I've had a full life. Perhaps one of the uh, phrases I would use is uh, the word opportunity and perhaps challenge. If I had not been part of the community, I would not have had the, upper, uh, the opportunities for education, for service, and for the things that I've had. And uh, I've been challenged, of course. But I am lonely and in pain. Let your salvation, O oh God, protect me. I will praise the name of God. What does it mean to be challenged? For Benedictine monks, to be challenged means finding a sense of balance in everyday life. Brother Basil explains that the rule of St. Benedict encourages this pursuit. He was quite the one who really posed questions for you that really made you think of where you're going or what you're doing and that helped you grow within yourself or within your soul. But it's just rubbing shoulders with your other community, monks or brothers, that sometimes they may rub you the wrong way, but it's in that walking with them that you Learn to grow within yourself and end up helping them or they help you, whatever the case may be. For a man so highly revered in Christianity, there is surprisingly little written on the life of St. Benedict. As a young man in the 6th century, he became disillusioned with the world around him and fled to a cave in the hills outside of Rome, where he underwent a deeply religious experience. He established 12 monasteries nearby, which he later left to found a monastery at Monte Cassino. Written primarily for monks, the rule of St. Benedict possessed a spirit of moderation in a time of upheaval. It was adopted by most religious communities throughout the Middle Ages, making it one of the most influential rules in Western Christianity, and the author, the founder of Western Christian monasticism, and a patron saint of Europe. That spirit of moderation perhaps explains why the Benedictine order continues to remain relevant today. I, I think St. Benedict is open to change in his rule. He says, you know, here's the rule, but if the abbot decides otherwise, the abbot can make a decision to make these kind of changes and adaptations. So, as I say, I think the rule itself is very open to change, adaptation. There are some other rules that fell out of favor very quickly, that were quite rigid. And the rule of Benedict, from the early commentators on to today, praised it for a sense of moderation. Benedict allowed for the normal human life and human beings to live uh, a normal life, I would say, uh, focused in community and focused, uh, as he says, in seeking God. Life at the Abbey is relatively structured. The monks pray together four times a day, beginning at 6.20 every morning. They also attend Mass after the first prayer. There is time for individual prayer throughout the day, and in between the three meals a day, they have work responsibilities around the Abbey. In total, the monks spend about two hours a day in church. This is their rhythm, 365 days a year. Father Demetrius Wasilinik came to St. Peter's Abbey in 1986. The former mortician and EMT is also an ordained priest. 
As with his fellow monks, prayer for him is constant. When I pray, I, I pray with my brothers the five times that we come together and I'm present with them. And, you know, the, the whole aspect of the Opus Dei, the, in the Latin, the work of God, we do this together, praying the 150 Psalms of the Old Testament. That's something I do communally. I pray throughout the day because there's always things in my mind, there's always people who ask for prayer. So I, I offer those prayers for them. Or oh, would you pray for my daughter? Or would you pray for my son? I mean, it's... Uh, uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's a request, but it's also a, a a privilege to do that. You know, and and to pray for others. Every monk interviewed for this video described an innate sense of belonging when asked why they chose to come to St. Peter's Abbey. To get here, you'll simply need to follow the number five highway in central Saskatchewan. At about 120 kilometers east of Saskatoon, the towers of St. Peter's Cathedral come into view. At the village of Munster, the only physical boundary between the abbey and the outside world is an undulating ribbon of railroad tracks. Once on the other side, as more of the 2,800 acres of land comes into view, you can't help but feel a sense of temperament. Similar to those railroad tracks, steel parallel beams dividing one side from the other, monastic life is distinguished by two lines. The monks are very much aware of and involved with life on the outside, yet have found a way to live in the modern world by rules that predate the Middle Ages. They travel that line, experiencing both sides of the tracks. The Abbey offers a, a different, um, shall we say, venue of church. It is not a parish church, it is not a parish setting. It is a religious, it is a monastic setting. It brings to you the rhythm of the life of prayer and work itself and that are to be in balance, which I think in everyone's life is out of balance. You can go to your parish on Sunday and you know, and it's very good for that hour and you tootle off and you're back into the rat race or whatever. Well, here there is, the, the, if there's a rat race, it's because you make it. Monastic uh, rhythm or time is like no other. I mean, you know, you get things done, but not as you would in, for, for instance, they say the real world. Here, I might be doing a work, but if, you know, 5.30 comes for prayers for Vesper, everything stops, and you go and do that, because that's what's, what, what you're called to do. Father Demetrius, like other monks, holds several titles at the Abbey. He's the guest master, an ambassador to the Abbey's 3,000 annual guests who come here for both religious and non-religious reasons. And when he's not maintaining the guest wing or looking after residence life at the attached college where he is student resident director, you might find him in one of his favorite hideaways, the Honey Hut. From the beginning, monasteries have always had bees. The wax can be used for candle making, and the honey a sweetener or as an ingredient for mead. The monks at St. Peter's have been keeping bees since the 1940s. Father Demetrius is the abbey's second beekeeper. He found beekeeping to be far more than a work detail. For him, it's continuing a legacy. When I was a novice in about 1986, 87, nobody wanted to work with the bees. And I liked Father Xavier. I said, well, I'll give it a try. Well, I got my, I got stung like you wouldn't believe. And he didn't think I'd come back to the bee yard, but I did. For all of us, we have something that, a hobby or something that we like to do. And it's something that I like to do. And plus the fact when I'm with the bees, nobody bothers me. And bees also are very communal. You might say that a monastery could be equated to a beehive. The monks view work as a privilege. St. Peter's is mostly self-sufficient. They grow their own produce and donate when they can to those in need. Radiating out from the sun-bleached brick buildings lies orchards, gardens, and pastures. In the summer months, you'll find the monks out working the land. 
There's Brother Wolfgang, the Abbey's most senior monk, who at 93 continues to cultivate tomatoes and sunflowers. Nearby, Father Lawrence grows carrots to take to his remote parishes in the northern reaches of the province. The history of St. Peter's Abbey is vivid. Founded in 1903 to serve the needs of European settlers who were pioneering the Canadian West, the monks in the Abbey acted as a catalyst for development. As the Abbey grew, so did the number of monks. At one point, there was nearly 60 of them. Today, there are 15. Similar to the rules of St. Benedict, the Abbey has maintained a sensibility to the needs of the outside world, from establishing a school, and later a college, to a guest wing in a printing press. St. Peter's is not immune to the decline in interest in vocations. Not surprisingly, the Abbey has established some adaptations to the 21st century. Brother Benedict is the most junior member amongst the monks. He came here just five years ago from Winnipeg and first learned about the Abbey through the internet. I thought, I really have to explore my spirituality. I have to explore. And uh, so I decided to get a hold of different monasteries and do a live-in experience. And uh, I, I learned about the place through the internet. I studied for four years in Saskatoon music education, and I never heard of this place 20 years ago. The Abbey's next chapters are unwritten, and while the future of St. Peter's sits on many of the monks' minds, they all believe the rule of St. Benedict and the role of the monks continue to have a place in today's world. I want people to know is that um, we care about them. And it's kind of hard to care about someone if you don't know who's doing the caring. And I think that anyone who comes here, that I've dealt with and I deal with lots of guests, so like 3,000 a year, is that they say that there's something very special about us and they wish us to continue. Well, I want to give them an opportunity to help us continue. Now, why should they? I think the answer to that is come and see and you will know why. And, uh, and you will know why we care.